Hey, sister soul, sister. All right, you know what? Grab me a bowl, sister. Oh yeah, we're back at it with another video. Green Dream Project, Jim here. And Jessica. And today we are talking about something she wouldn't tell me. Talking about growing plants. Growing plants. Oh yeah, eventually we're gonna stop talking about growing plants and actually grow some <laughs> plants. I think that's happening soon, right? I hope so. Enough talking. Enough talking, time for action. That's what people want to see. People want to see action. But there's going to be action in this video because we're going to have some painting going on, right? Mm -hmm. Hope you guys love that painting. It's something we love doing here. Talking about plants, doing some painting. I know we're talking about growing plants, but what plant are we What plant are we covering today? Today, we're talking about three plants. Jess, we don't have time for three plants. One plant takes up the whole thing. Well, if we keep talking about other stuff, yeah. Other stuff is what I do. I never stay on topic. Today, I want to talk about the three sisters. So the three sisters, is a growing technique and it's three plants. This technique was started by Native Americans. Native Americans, they, they knew what it was all about. They had to grow in their own particular environments. They had to learn how to best do that, utilize it. Now this is a companion planting and this is probably one of the most popular companion planting techniques. It's the most widely known. Yes. So do you know what the three plants are? It's corn, squash, and beans. Yeah. See? I know what I know what the three sisters is, okay? Everyone's like, that's not the three sisters. It's not actually three sisters, it's plants. But it actually that actually is a story behind that, right? There is. And I think there's actually a lot of legends surrounding that from, you know, the different different tribes and whatnot. Yeah. They each probably got their own little three sister story, huh? And there's one that involves the Trail of Tears about three sisters who support each other through that difficult journey, you know, keeping each other strong and nourished and hydrated. We're not sisters, but you keep me strong and hydrated. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> ah. There's one version of this legend that goes something like this. A very long time ago, there were three sisters who lived in a field. The youngest one was so small that she couldn't walk. She had to crawl along the ground, and she was dressed in green. The middle sister wore a bright yellow dress, and she darted back and forth across the field. The eldest sister stood straight and tall, and her body bent with the wind. She had long yellow hair, and she wore a green shawl. The three sisters loved each other very much, and they couldn't imagine living without one another. Then one day, a little boy came to the field. He could talk with the birds and animals, and he was fearless. The three sisters were very interested in this boy, and they watched him as he used a knife to carve a bowl or hunt with his bow and arrow. Later in the summer, the youngest of the three sisters disappeared. The other two sisters mourned her until the fall. Then the second sister disappeared, and now there was only one sister left. She did not bow her head in sorrow, but still she mourned her sisters deeply, and she thought that she could not live alone in the field without her sisters. As the days grew shorter and colder, her green shawl began to lose its color, and her yellow hair became dry and tangled. Night and day she sighed for her sisters, but her voice was low like the wind, and no one heard her. Then one day in the harvest season, the little boy heard the third sister crying, and he felt sorry for her. So he took her in his arms and carried her to his home, and there, to her surprise, were her other sisters. Safe in his lodge, they were all very glad to be reunited. They decided to stay with the boy because winter was coming and his home was warm and comfortable. The three sisters made themselves very useful to the boy and his family, keeping their dinner pot full and giving them food throughout the winter. And from that day to this, the three sisters were never separated again. So corn or maize, 
uh, beans and squash were three main agricultural crops for Native Americans. They came from Mexico and through the generations they kind of traveled north. They were important for food and also traded as goods. And this is a really great example of companion planting where two plants or multiple plants grouped together can benefit each other. Now this is just probably one of the most uh, popular examples. There's so many different possibilities and varieties that can go together. And uh, I'm sure they haven't even all been explored. It's probably a good idea to do a little bit of research and, and find out what works for your particular area and uh, what plants work for you. <laughs> time out. Bug time. A little bug break. Whenever you see one of what are those that a uh, ladybug larva? Yeah. She just wanted to take uh take a moment to grass snag that and uh put it in the greenhouse where it could be most effective. <laughs> Gotta take advantage of that when you can, right? Nature's pest control. Sorry, aphids. Ladybugs in the hails. <laughs> Is that enough? Yeah. Do we got a thumbnail in there? <laughs> you have two thumbnail faces. I have two thumbnail faces. Ah! Yeah. Oh! <laughs> those are my, those are my go-tos. I'm working on blue steel next. <laughs> Let's talk about the functionality. So we have your corn or maize that's grown in the center. So the beans are usually planted maybe when the corn is five or six inches tall, and then the squash is planted after that. Yeah, and the corn acts as a trellis or support for the climbing beans. What about the beans? Because they have a function too. Are they nitrogen fixing? They are. Ah, they provide nutrients in the soil for the other plants. Mm -hmm. And the squash is let run along the ground, and it acts as a ground cover and weed suppressant. Squash has those trailing vines and broad leaves creates like a, a microclimate for the ground. Shade, cools the ground, helps retain moisture, and suppresses those weeds. Yeah, so this is just one really great example, which obviously is time-tested, of plants working together. And you can do variations on this. You know, like uh, you need a plant that Probably is tall, has a strong stem, maybe like a sunflower, could act as a trellis. Other kinds of nitrogen fixing, climbing vines, maybe peas would work too. And something for a ground cover, there's lots of great ground covers, but maybe something like a melon, nasturtiums, uh, like a trailing nasturtium, or some kind of melon with broad leaves that goes on the ground. I think it's great to think about how you can use plants in these combinations that work together and ultimately benefit each other, but also it makes less work for you as a gardener. If you have a plant that can act as a trellis, you don't have to build a trellis. Have the plants provide nutrients to the soil, have them you know, suppress the weeds for you so you don't have to do a lot of weeding and you know, retain moisture so you're not watering all the time and maybe you can throw in some plants that deter pests so you're not fighting those those bugs or whatever's eating the your crops it's really one of the uh, main tenets of permaculture design if you can do more functionality from what you're planting and creating less work for yourself what we're trying to focus on with our garden design is how can we get that garden to function as a unit you know not just putting things in the ground, but how do those work together? How do those play together? And how can it become sort of a self-sustaining system just by what you plant and where you plant it? Yeah. So as we design our garden and implement it, we'll kind of show our process of choosing plants and uh, you know what varieties we choose, where we choose to plant them and why, and then I guess how that turns out. So the garden is being built Jessica's been hard at work. She's been cutting some posts. We got some materials the other day. That's gonna be part of the garden, garden area we're building. I know people are like, green dream project, what's green out there? It's coming. And spoiler alert, there's gonna be a big collaboration coming up. 
multi-channel collaboration involving some seeds and some growing. Oh ho 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 ho. GDP is a part of that. That should be very exciting. Six channels involved. Woo! Don't want to miss it. That's coming up soon. All right, thanks a lot for joining us, everyone. If you enjoyed this talk about the three sisters and companion planting, please give this video a thumbs up. In fact, I know it's going to get tons of thumbs up because who doesn't love the three sisters? If you haven't subscribed, please do. We'd love to have you around. Definitely leave a comment down below. Let us know some of your favorite companion planting combos. We're interested. Share this with a friend or two because get the word out about companion planting three sisters. And also you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks a lot and stay tuned. Like I said, so much coming down the pipeline. It's so exciting. Ah! Catch you on the next video everyone.